everybody, thanks for joining us. Um, I'm here with Pastor Aaron. This is right after the message. We wanted to sit down together and just yeah. share questions that we weren't able to really address or yeah. get into during the message as we sort of dig into these topics yeah. a little bit more. I'm excited for it. Yeah, we're gonna keep doing this every single week. And yep. today, we talked about voting like Jesus. Yes. Politics. <laughs> that was a Hello. tough one. <laughs> yeah, we can talk about politics in the church. Yeah. And a lot of us haven't had that sort of setting or conversation before, so it brings up a lot of more specific questions. One of those first questions would be, if I vote for somebody and I feel like it was a good person to vote for, yeah. and that person doesn't become the president or doesn't get into office, then what do I do now? I think the first thing is kind of what we talked about at the end of service of where's my trust at? And so having that trust in God, that God, you see a bigger picture than even I do. You see beyond even this four years and you're weaving together this beautiful mosaic or puzzle. You're putting all of these pieces together to bring about your will in your kingdom and your glory. And so if my candidate doesn't get in office, I still trust you. A couple of things with that, we are called to respect them. And yeah. I know that's hard sometimes, bringing us back to that Romans passage where Paul is writing to the church. And imagine that they're right there in Rome, you know, where Caesar's at and all of these <laughs> political things are going on in the Senate at that time. Definitely. And yet he looks at them and says, everyone is subject to authority. Mm -hmm. So even the church there in Rome, you have to bring that respect. I would challenge you with that of, God, how do I respect and honor that person? Even if it wasn't the individual that I voted for, we want to make sure that we're bringing that correct heart to that. God, I do respect them. You've placed them in authority. It may look different than I thought, but I, I want to do that. On the flip side of that is respecting them doesn't necessarily mean we agree with every decision that they make. Yeah. So there may be things in their term, you know, as Congress or Senate or President, whatever that is. And we're told it's okay to pray for a more godly leader, a different leader, mm -hmm. pray for, their, for them to have wisdom. And I love... Um, what John Jones pointed out in our teaching meeting. He's like, look, the Hebrew people were crying out, God, save us from Pharaoh. I mean, he obviously wasn't great. Yeah. He didn't love them well at all. <laughs> yeah. But he was their leader. And so God was doing something there, but yet they could pray, God, this is an oppressive situation, help us out. Mm -hmm. And so I think there is that level of respect of the way that we speak about them, the way that we do honor them because they're in a position God put them in. And yet that doesn't mean that we can't disagree with them or see things differently. Yeah. We can do that in a respectful way. And we can also pray either that God would change their heart or that God would bring in a more godly leader. Man, that can be so hard to think that we could still have that sort of support or even praying and like their best interests in our mind. Yeah. It is countercultural, but I think it's sort of the point of the message. So in the message you were talking about being united in the midst of these culture wars, like how can we have this sort of unity with all of this going on? And I think it's what you just said to kind of end our last point of like so many times when we disagree, we think, oh, that person's evil, you know, or, mm -hmm. or they're the enemy. I love this phrase. I think it was Ravi Zachariah, a Christian apologist. He said, we can disagree without being disagreeable. We can see things differently. And it doesn't mean we have to be disagreeable, mm -hmm. that we have to hate each other or be the enemy. There's so many times on social media where it really feels like that. If you see this differently, then you don't love me or yeah. you don't respect me or any of that. And that's not the case. We can respect one another, but see things from a different perspective. A couple mm -hmm. of verses, first, Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 11 Paul encourages this church aspire to live quietly mind your own affairs work with your own hands as we've instructed you in Romans 12 8 he challenges them hey live at peace with all men as far as it's up to you and within your control basically saying hey some people are gonna be angry and divisive mm -hmm. and all of that but as far as you're concerned and you're able to strive to live at peace and I think we can if we choose to listen a little bit more than we speak let's ask some great questions and say hey help me understand that how do you see it like that I think that shows respect that yeah. I care about you as a person or and I do to care understand. about your yeah yeah, yeah. I think from. that's so great we can see things differently and yet we can still love one another mm -hmm. and be unified even in the midst of that and I think it shows the picture of what the church should be yeah. do this well in the midst of this culture war we really shine as the light that Christ has called yeah. us to be which quick thought like is what you mentioned in the message that it shows the world we're united not because of these things but yeah. because of something different the church still being united like shows the yeah. world 
that's not what it's about. These yeah. things you're disagreeing on. All of that I think is easier when we realize that like, God is in control and yeah. you focus on that in the message. We're really focused on the Lord and he's over politics and government and all of that. I just wanted to know you have other thoughts about having that perspective. I think for so many people that we really are putting maybe our trust or our hope, maybe subconsciously on a level of it's going to be this person getting to office that's really going to you know, save our nation or bring us back or build stronger morals. And I think it's realizing that Jesus is the savior, not Washington. Yeah. You know, that it's not going to be some political leader, some policy, some government or anything like that, but that it's Christ that brings that. Malcolm Muggeridge, he says this, he says, on one hand, we think it's some new policy or discovery. We're confident that it's going to make everything right, a new fuel, a new drug, a new government relationship. And on the other hand, some disaster is going to expect to bring our undoing. So capitalism breakdown, fuel will run out, plutonium will lay us low, atomic waste will kill us off. And then, you know, overpopulation will suffocate us. And then he goes into that quote to remind us, and that's what I mentioned in our message, that that we do, we serve a king who was not elected by man and cannot be dethroned. Mm -hmm. We're citizens of the city of God that wasn't built by human hands and can't be destroyed by human hands. And I think it's realizing that, and that helps us so much with this overall view. Hey, we can handle these cultural wars. We can handle even differences in politics when we realize, hey, we both agree on that fact that Washington's not gonna ultimately save us. It doesn't mean we don't yeah. want good leaders, but mm -hmm. it's not our ultimate salvation. That's God that we're looking to, to really correct the wrong and the evil in all of our hearts. It's Christ yeah. that saves us and redeems us. Jesus is our savior mm -hmm. and we can agree on that. And then we can discuss, hey, how do we best then serve politically our nation and help you know, our neighbor and those in our community to really love them and demonstrate that. I hope this has been helpful for you yeah. guys. Aaron, thanks for taking some time yep. after preaching today already. Yeah. <laughs> this is all about just us growing and understanding our role as the church. <laughs> Tune in the next few weeks yes. as we dig into these other conversations, things like immigration, sanctity of life. If it's legal, is that yeah, okay? And these are gonna that. be some really great conversations and you need to be there, be here on Sundays, but even just engage with these conversations yeah. as we dig in a little bit. So thanks for being here and we'll see you next week.